This is AIT Special Feature. Dr. Mrs. Mariam Babangida became Nigeria's first lady in August 1985. As wife of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, her role was laudable and quite visible in the progress of the nation. She believed in the active participation of women in national development. Between 1985 and 1993, she established several programs directed at mobilizing Nigerian women. For most of them, as a renowned Better Life for Rural Women, inaugurated in Abuja in September 1987. Youthful Mariam got married to then Major Ibrahim Badamazi Babangida in September 1969. And years after, in 1984, her husband became the Chief of Staff. Thus, the mantle of leadership as National President of the Nigeria Army Officers' Wives Association, NAOA, fell on her by tradition. This presented her ample opportunity to demonstrate her now-renowned leadership qualities. This documentary paints a portrait of the life and times of late Mrs. Mariam Babangida and revealing in the process the significance of a stable family and the life of a leader. My last moments with her is very sad. Very, very sad because I was the one in the room when she passed away. Even in death, Mrs. Murray Mbabangida remains a colossus. Unarguably, she sustains the accolade of a woman of substance. Murray Mbabangida walked through this earth with a rear gate. She carried her assignment with panache, and today, wherever she touched, her marks remain indelible. Until death took her away, the humble and modest upbringing which she had was not diminished. Mariam Babangida said of her modest and decent upbringing, Growing up was an interesting experience. We were four girls and a boy. We were taught the science and art of keeping a home and a perfect union. This became my experience when I got married in 1969 and my husband had to leave me to fight in the war front to keep Nigeria together. That is the hallmark of a great woman and she exhibited the traits very early in life. Her upbringing would later impact her entire life journey. That was vintage Mariam. I was one of the bridesmaids and I remember the marriage clearly. They lived a bit in Kaduna, went to the US and then went to, when they came back from the US, he was posted to Lagos. They were in Lagos until he became the head of state. Now, um, we are all born for a reason in this world. Sometimes we realize that and we chase that which is given to us naturally. Mariam Babangida met a man that was suited to her. He gave her the opportunity to shine the way God had created her or what God had created her to do on earth. In 1985, General Ibrahim Badamasi Babangida became the head of state of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. By providence, Mariam became the first lady. Before the coming of Mariam Babangida on the scene, Nigeria's history did not have a record of any achievement of a first lady. In her brilliance, she articulated the classic role of the office of the first lady. With style, she embellished it with a mixture of her elegance and ravishing beauty. Her ebony color sparkling, you know, with her white dentition, which brought out her beauty, and which was actually, when I asked her, said it was because she has ageless beauty. That's why she actually married her. Because even at old age, she will remain that beautiful. Mariam's husband, General Ibrahim Babangida, GCFR, retired. On reflection, recall what attracted him to Mariam in her days as a student of the Federal Training Center. It was a relationship beyond infatuation. I was a young officer in the war front, and we used to come to on break any time during the war. 
at that time, the family were living in Kaduna. The parents, her parents were living in Kaduna. And there is a good relationship. One of my good friends and classmates, General Dubai, his father was the elder brother of my wife's mother. So I was quite frequent and I was fairly well known in the house. And that's where the relationship started. The result of her love for humanity and articulation was the involvement of a pet project christened Better Life for Rural Women. The program was conceived to have a direct impact on the lives of rural women who were described as the most sidelined, most impoverished, and therefore most vulnerable in Africa. The objectives of the program were... Reduce maternal and child mortality rate by providing basic health care facilities for women. Provide income generating opportunities through agriculture and cottage industries. Integrate rural women into national development plans. And above all, develop educational training for women. The Better Life program has the interest and welfare of every woman. Often disabled and the widow. This was what motivated us to research into widowhood practices throughout the country. Today I am happy to say that the Better Life Program's efforts in solving the problem of widows are gradually paying off. Understanding who she was, Mariam Babangida gave her all for this project and in the end she reached the utopia. In no time, the Better Life program attracted recognition from across Africa and the global community. The daily engagements fostered on her by the pet project stretched her elastic capacity. And always, she had her hands full with invitations to global events. For the first time, the recognition and acceptance of the informal sector as a force in any economic development that's what the Better Life program was all about. And that's how it impacted. And if you look at the history of economic growth in Nigeria, you will realize all the other growth we recorded so far had been artificial. It was the only time that we had real economic growth because it was from the people. Never was the office of the First Lady of Nigeria so revered. She was a pace setter and her motherhood was driven by her passion for women empowerment. More than three decades after, the zeal with which this program was pursued is yet to be equaled. The late Ghanaian leader, foremost African son, uh, Kwame Nkrumah, formulated a theory. He talked about the need to raise the consciousness of the citizens of Ghana, and by extension the citizens of Africa, to know their rights and ensure participation through inclusiveness. I think if we look at our country, Nigeria, the only person who came close to what Nkrumah preached then was the late Mariam Babangida, particularly when it relates to women, not just women, women in rural areas. Mariam Babangida understood power. She wielded it to achieve the objective of her pet project. The Better Life for Rural Women lifted many rural women from the dust of poverty. That's one program that actually opened the eyes of the ordinary person in the village and in the rural area, you know, to governmental intervention. They never contemplated that government people or a first lady can come down to the level of the rural dwellers and share in their aspirations. She took women from the rural area to Beijing. They've never boarded a flight. They don't know what it's like to be on an aeroplane. She took them there and she gave them hope. She's into uplifting people. No matter who you are, there's a way she will when she comes close to you, she will bring you to a level that you amaze yourself. It is safe to conclude 
that Mariam was a formidable force and significant influence behind President Ibrahim Babangida. One thing that Babangida did was that he never made enemies. People didn't see him as enemies at all. They saw him as a friend, and I believe it was his wife. He wouldn't see her and think she was a Christian or a Muslim. She was simply a Nigerian first lady. And she related with everybody as a sister. She was really wonderful. And, um, and it affected her husband also. A good wife can make a difference in leadership. Yet, nothing suggests that this Amazon overreached herself with a splendor of power. No matter what, whether it's my personal life or school or my sporting life, She's always there. She was always a pillar of strength, and that is something that I miss dearly about not having her around anymore. Even though she was very busy, she always created that time for us. She was very concerned, very hands-on. We did assignments together, homework and what have you, and she was part of my everyday life. Mrs. Babangida took all of us in the army who, who were close to uh, General Babangida as family members. Uh, she, didn't, she didn't differentiate between her own biological children and those of us who were uh, close friends. She was a fantastic mother, that I can attest to, really. She was, uh, her home was everything for her and uh, everything was perfect. I remember, you know, she was advising us, look, you know, don't make your husband unhappy. If he feels you have to cook for him, you don't need to cook, but once you go to the kitchen, you sit there, somebody does the cookie, he will never know. But don't upset him by coming out and say, I won't cook, you know, no matter how strong you are. She taught us um, to be honest in everything we do and be very hardworking. So we do that, and I'm glad those of us that imbibed what she taught, we're, we're, we're really appreciating it now. We're seeing it. Better Life for Rural Women was a project driven by a genuine concern for the plight of Nigerians living in slums like Maroko, Makoko, and Ajegunle. These habitations painted a picture of scholar, hopelessness, and other deprivation in Lagos, which was at that time the federal capital territory. It was this symphony of contradiction that ignited Murray's passion for creating a platform through which Rural dwellers, in particular how women folk, could be empowered. Better Life for Rural Women. Fantastic program that um, brought her in touch with women all over this country at the lowest possible level. And her kindness, her motherly disposition, um, and her love for education. In summary, these are things that I would like her to be remembered for. The Better Life program also had a health component. Mariam was concerned about the high maternal and infant mortality at the time. Apart from providing local birth attendants with modern knowledge on childbearing, she also established and equipped maternity homes to eliminate the hazards associated with long distance between communities and the nearest government hospitals. This effectively reduced the rate of deaths, some of which are as a result of complications from lack of prompt medical attention. Mariam Babangida and her Better Life program raised the health component of Nigeria at that time to a global standard, working closely with the United Nations Children's Fund, UNICEF, to ensure coverage of the six childhood deadly diseases of polio, cholera, measles, diphtheria, diarrhea, and whooping cough. She really interacted with UNICEF in the areas of child killer diseases through her pet project. And I'm yet to see any pro pet project of any first lady that has really impacted on the lives of the people. With the program's attainment of global status, Mrs. Mariam Babangida soon assembled some of the best brains in the country to form a think tank team that would pilot her dreams. With this team, 
women issues became the subject of national focus. This culminated in the establishment of the National Commission for Women and eventually metamorphosed into a Ministry of Women Affairs. She turned that office as an appendage of the of, of the office of the of the head of state or, or the president or the president, civilian or military, turned into an office where they were now playing active role, making profound statements on policy direction for the country. I think it's a good development what she started because nobody before her was speaking on national issues from the, from the position of being the wife of the president or wife of head of state. So for this, you cannot just, you cannot just talk about her and say, uh, what did she do? She came, she saw, she conquered. It is a pity that she died so young. She built that women's center single-handedly through her NGO, the Better Life Program with no contribution for the government. Then later, when the Abacha government came, they seized it and made a women's center. Aisha Ismail was in fact the first permanent secretary, National Commission for Women, and she had cause to relate with the late first lady, who was indeed the mastermind of the commission. Hajia Ismail is indeed a repository of the workings of the Better Life program. The nation came to recognize that actually we are the backbone of the society because we dominated the informal sector and then we were the backbone of agriculture at that time. And the transfer of technology they realized was, you know, to us because we were not only farmers but we were in charge solely of processing, packaging, distribution, you name it, the, in the food chain. And the environment, we were in control water resource, we were in control. And because there was transfer in those sectors, you saw the upliftment of human beings themselves. We got quality life, you know, I mean, can I say better, as she said, better life than we had. And uh, I don't think we have really done anything much better than that time. With time, Mariam Babangira extended her pet project to accommodate children education. She realized the role education could play in the lives of a people, particularly the indigent children. To further strengthen this vision, even when she is out of office, she established the now famous El Amin International School for the sole aim of providing quality education for children of both the poor and the rich. She said of El Amin, our concept of establishing the El Amin International School was to provide an opportunity for children of the rich, the not so rich, and the poor to enjoy qualitative education through a conducive learning environment that will ginger the students to exploit their natural talents. The first couple of years, I must say, it was quite tough because there was a lot of anxiety of what will befall the school after she's gone because she was such a strong character she was such a ever-present person and she was always there so it was a very big shoot to fill but thank god we we're able to uh, sustain her legacies there and we we're also able to uh, sustain the academic performances and all the things that she held so dear to her in the school the discipline and so on so for me it's been 10 years since her demise we celebrated the founders day a few weeks ago and in particular it was a special moment for us because for me, 10 years down the road, we are still here, we are still doing what she loved so much and we're still excelling in the sphere of education management. What next is her last dream that she had to complete the chain in the education management, which is to set up the university. And I'm grateful to God to be able to be the one who would fill in that missing, missing link. Available data from the National Commission for Women show that before the inception of the Better Life program, there were 378 cooperative groups, but this rose to 9,492 with the Better Life program. On November 12, 2008, Mariam Babangira gave a speech at the launch of an appeal fund for adult literacy and acquisition facility in a village called Saukakahuta in Niger State. At that occasion, it was as if she had a premonition of her death. To the beneficiaries of this facility, let me tell you that you are special to me 
not just because of your energy, but because of the name of your village, Sokakahuta, which roughly translates to bring down and rest. I marked my birthday on November 1, which brings me to an age where I need to bring down or calm down and rest. I want to rest. The question is, do you want me to rest? Oh, Chumati Ma, oh, Chumati Ma, me. With her death for choice, the clock started ticking. The rudeness of death is that it is no respecter of persons, class, or creed. The passionate and glamorous Miriam surrendered to the cold hands of death on December 27, 2009. Kasim Afebwa, a spokesman to former President Ibrahim Babangida, GCFR. He recounts the pain they shared when death suddenly took her away. I left my village on Saturday back to Abuja. I just got to Gwagwalada by Giri Junction when I got a call from IBB. He said, Prince, I said, yes, sir. He said, Madam couldn't make it. Will be coming with her body tomorrow. I said, What? He said, Yes. He said, Go on. He said, Go and issue a statement, official statement, announcing her death. My vehicle skidded off the road. Thank God that I didn't have a fatal accident. God, the shock was too palpable. As a former military officer, one of the characteristics of a good soldier is adaptability to, to be able to adapt to any changing um, circumstances and over the years I have been able to adapt to a current situation that's a fact that's a hard reality of life there's nothing I could do about it so I have to adapt she was mourned by so many people both at home and in the diaspora a flurry of tributes poured in at the death of Mariam. Admiral Augustus Aihomo was the vice president in the military government of Ibrahim Babu Ngida. He was closely associated with the former first lady. He wrote in his tribute, For my family and me, it has not been easy to grapple with the reality that this phenomenal lady has left us in body, but obviously not in spirit and memory. She was and continues to be an epitome of goodness, fellowship, and integrity. In an editorial of January 6, 2010, this day newspaper wrote about Maria. Maria Babangida, the wife of Nigeria's former military president, was easily the country's most prominent first lady, both in terms of impact and towering personality. The editorial concluded that the best tribute that can be paid to her now is for women in similar positions to overcome their ego and vanities of the present existence to affect others, especially the less privileged. Hassan Mohamed Jalo is a lawyer who was inspired by IBB's system of governance. He proposes how late Murray and Baba Ingida should be remembered. I'm going to use this medium to call on the government, both the Niger State government and the federal government, to please immortalize Hajia Dr. Mariam Babangida because of her contributions to humanity and the emancipation of the women folk in Nigeria and Africa. Chief Jim Wobodo shares a close relationship with the Babangida family. He expresses a sentimental memory of the former First Lady. One thing that struck me was to see a general really crying like a baby. So you, you could see that closeness, that friendship, that love. You, you, you could see that. So, and I believe that um, he will miss her. He will continue to miss her until he's no more. She was one woman in many who institutionalized the office of the First Lady. Beyond the glamour and paraphernalia of office, she tossed women in the remotest areas of Nigeria. Noteworthy is that these true Nigerians were available for everyone to see. 
There was no dichotomy between north and south. Neither was there any between Christians and Muslims during the IBB era. The life and time of Mariam Babangida teaches a lesson in humanity, resilience, hard work, dedication and selfless service to the cause of the underprivileged. She had the opportunity to take to opulence and ostentatious living. Instead, she chose to stay with the wretched of the earth, women, indigent children, and the needy. Her global acclaim is equally numerous. In 1991, for instance, she shared the African Prize for Leadership with the Kenyan Professor Wangari Matai for both women's contribution to a sustainable end to hunger in their lands. The Mariam Babangida National Center for Women Development, which she founded in 1993, focuses on research, training, and mobilization of women for self-emancipation, among other values. She was known by many as the greatest first lady that has walked the land of Africa. And to some, she was the ideal role model for African women and women across the globe. Such effervescent soul as Mariam Babangida is not easily forgotten in the labyrinth of life. On a daily basis, an event could always happen that tells me, oh, I wished she were there. A, B, C, D would not have happened. Or A, B, C, D would have happened. This is on a daily occurrence. Anybody who knows Babangida knew that since the wife died, it has not been the same. It is just the first thing that strikes me. You, there's something you can do to bring it back to what it was. So it is clear to everybody that a good home makes a good leadership. If you, had a, if you have a good wife that supports you, whatever you do, and gives you suggestions, you go places. And I think Nigerian women are missing. My mother should be remembered as a, a, a woman who came and changed the dynamics and the perception of women generally in Nigeria. For me, truly, she was one of the greatest leaders that we had in this country. Not because I worked with her. I had worked with other people. But for me, because she focused on the humanity existing. Looking back, now I realize how much pain she took to uh, keep all of us together, make us feel at home, uh, make us feel a part and parcel of the family. Uh, she was a very wonderful woman. 